So welcome to the next episode of the Microbiology Tube. So in this episode, you will be learning about the urease assay. So first, the urease assay is the enzymatic assay that is used for the determinations of the concentrations of unknown antibiotics. For example, so whenever you have the antibiotics and the concentrations of the antibiotics is unknown, so this method can be used for the determinations of the concentrations of the antibiotics. So there are basically uh, principles, there are some basic principles about the urease assay. So what happens is that whenever the organisms is grown on the media that is rich in the urea, so for example, one of the bacteria called the Proteus mirabilis. So this bacteria is responsible for the production of the urease enzyme. So what happens is that if the Proteus mirabilis are incubated uh, in the urea rich medium, so the urea are converted into the am am ammonia. So what happens? Whenever the concentrations of the ammonia is larger in a test tube, so there will be the increase in the pH. So there will be the increase in the pH. So after the name, here the, all the judgments are done by the urease. So if the concentrations of the urease are there, so there will be the, if the high concentrations of urease are there, there will be the high concentration of the pH. If there is the low concentration of the urease, there will be the low concentrations of the pH. So all these are just judged by the enzyme called the urease. So this test is named after the urease assay. So what happens is that one of the antibiotics called the aminoglycoside antibiotics. So this is the group of the antibiotics, aminoglycoside antibiotics that is responsible for the inhibitions of the proteas because this antibiotics inhibit the protein synthesis in any microorganisms hence if there is the inhibitions in the synthesis of the proteins so there will be the inhibitions of the bacteria so what happens if we add the aminoglycoside antibiotics into the medium so the proteus mirabilis will be inhibited Hence, there will be the lesser productions of the urease enzyme. Hence, there will be the less amount of the pH. So, what happens? So, how will you do this work? So, I will tell you now. So, how this urease test is performed? So, how this urease test is performed is that first we take the first series of the test tube. So, first series of the test tube. So, similarly, we take the first series of the test tube. Similarly, we have to take the second series of the test tube. So you can see the test tubes, the first series and the second series. In the first series I have taken about the five test tubes but you can take according to your will. So according to your desire, according to the conditions, we can put it. So I have taken the first series of the test tubes and the second series of the test tube. So what you have to do is that you have to add the calibrator. So the, what is the calibrator? The calibrators are the known concentrations of the antibiotics. So what you do, you add the non-concentrations of the antibiotics in the first series as well as the second series. But note that the peers, note that the concentrations will be in the increasing order. So first, what you do, you add the 2 ml of the 2 ml of the urea, 2 ml of the uh, calibrator. Similarly, here also you add the 2 ml of the calibrator. So the concentration must be same in the first test tube and in the in the in the first test tube of the first series and the first test tube of the second series. Similarly, you also add the two ml of the two ml of the calibrator in the second series. Here, the concentrations of the second test tube of the first series and the second test tube of the second series should also be equal. So similarly, you add the calibrator. So that you add the calibrator. So I have given here 2 ml. So need not to give the 2 ml. You can give, you can take the volume of the calibrator according to the need. So after additions of the calibrator, so after you add the calibrator, so what you have to do is that you have to add the sample. So what is the sample? The samples are the unknown concentrations. So unknown concentration, 
so of the antibiotics so you don't know the concentration of antibiotics and you are going to find here so what you do is that in the first series what you do is that you add the equal volume of the sample that is equal to the calibrator i mean to say the calibrator volume and the sample volume should be equal for example if you are taking here the 2 ml of the calibrator add the 2 ml of the sample so that is the test antibiotics so here you add the 2 ml or the equal volume of the sample so calibrator and the sample volume are equal here so what you do in the second series in the second series you add the sample just half the volume of the calibrator for example if the calibrator volume is 2 ml add the 1 ml of the test antibiotic so the samples will be the 1 ml or half the volume of the calibrator so put in a such a way so after the addition so what you have added you have added the calibrator which is the non concentrations of the antibiotics similarly you have added the similarly you have added the uh, test antibiotics whose concentration is to be determined this is the concentration is not determined so we are going to determine the concentration of that antibiotics so then after what you do then after you add the bacteria so that is the proteus mirabilis so you add the proteus mirabilis suspension so you add the proteus mirabilis suspensions that contains the urea so this proteus mirabilis you know it has in the suspension so you add in the in the yeast test tube so that contains the urea also. so in the second series also you take you put in a such a way so what happens now so what happens is that in the so here will be the test antibiotics as well as the proteus mirabilis so what happens is that the antibiotics will try to inhibit the proteus mirabilis but due to the due to the due to the not sufficient amount of the antibiotics all the proteus mirabilis are not inhibited hence there will be the some productions of the urease enzyme so there will be the some productions of the urease enzymes that will convert the urea present in the media into the ammonia and hence that will rise the ph of the media so if you see here in the first series and the second series in the first series there is the higher concentrations of the antibiotics but in second series there is the low concentration of antibiotics because we have put the sample exactly half the volume of the calibrator in the second series in the first series the calibrator size volume is equal to the sample volume so here is the larger amount of the uh, larger amount of the antibiotics there is the smaller number of the antibiotics so the urease productions will be higher in the second series hence you hence urease productions will be higher and hence the ammonia productions will be higher and hence the ps will be high in this medium so we have to measure the ps of the medium after the incubations at 37 degree centigrade for 60 minutes so you have to incubate the this test tube for the 60 minute at the 37 degree centigrade so then after you measure the ph so after you measure the pH, so you draw a calibration curve. So you draw a calibration curve. So in the calibration curve, the y axis will represent the pH of the medium that you will calculate or that you will detect after the incubations. So next will be the log concentration of the antibiotics. So this is the log concentration of antibiotics means log concentrations of calibrator. So now in the first series, so as you know, the concentrations of the antibiotics and the pH are inversely proportional. If the concentrations of the antibiotics increases, the, the pH decreases. So if the concentration of antibiotics decreases, the pH increases. So the graph will be obtained in a such a way. This is your graph of the first series. Suppose this is the graph of the first series. The second series graph will be obtained also in a such a way, but the concentrations of antibiotics is lower in the first in the second series. The concentrations of the antibiotics is lower in second series as compared to the first series. So the graph will be somehow be here. So this will be the graph of the second series. So now 
after you look towards this uh, graph, so you can obtain that there is the, some distance between the first line and the second line. So there is some distance. So this this line represents the half log concentration concentration of test antibiotics. So this represents the half log concentrations of the test antibiotics. So so this is what the concentrations of the antibiotics. So differences is the half concentrations of the antibiotics. So now in such a way you can calculate the unknown concentrations of any antibiotics by the urease test and these are basically used in the pharmaceutical industries. So thank you for watching my video. If you really like the video, please press the like button and do not forget to subscribe and see you. Thank you. Thank you so much.